Alexandria, 47 BCE. Heat rose from the harbor stones as a young ruler walked through the palace archive. Papyrus dust drifted in the still air. Marble busts lined the corridor, each one eroded by centuries of handling. None carried her face, none agreed on her features. Two thousand years later, that absence persists. Painters and filmmakers replace the missing record with their own ideals. Pale skin, symmetric features, a face shaped by modern imagination rather than ancient evidence. In 2024, a new reconstruction emerged. Built from coins, sculptures, and digital facial metrics, it challenged the Hollywood portrait that dominated global memory. The data did not settle the debate, it redirected it. But the evidence would suggest a very different face. In the first century BCE, Egypt's final dynasty governed a kingdom shaped by trade, ritual, and shifting alliances. Within this world, Cleopatra VII appeared in the record through metal rather than marble. The earliest secure images of her came from silver tetradrums struck in Alexandria. Their surfaces carried a narrow profile, a strong jawline, hooked nose, and tightly coiled hair rendered in deliberate curls. The features were stylized, yet consistent across issues separated by years. Roman engravers reproduced similar forms. Their dyes often exaggerated the nose and chin, a practice common in political portraiture. Numismatists later cataloged these profiles and traced them through mint sequences, revealing patterns rather than certainty. The lines suggested a ruler presented with authority, not idealized beauty. Sculptures provided a second layer. A Berlin bust showed a rounded face with deep-set eyes. A Vatican piece echoed the same hairstyle, though softened by later restoration. Each object offered a partial truth, filtered through workshop tradition and the demands of royal image-making. Researchers compared these forms, marking convergences where independent artifacts aligned. Amid these fragments, a figure emerged, recognizable yet unstable. Her likeness survived in metal, not memory. By the early 20th century, archaeologists had mapped much of the Nile Delta, yet Cleopatra's burial place remained absent from every survey. Excavations at Alexandria revealed layers shattered by earthquakes and harbor collapse, leaving only scattered architectural blocks from the late Ptolemaic period. Attention shifted westward to Tapasiris Magna, where a cluster of coins bearing her image surfaced in temple debris. Their concentration indicated activity during her reign, though no inscription linked the site directly to her final years. Teams working from 2004 onward documented shafts, mummification tools, and Greco-Egyptian statues once set into sanctuary walls. Ground-penetrating radar traced corridors beneath sand dunes, but none yielded royal remains. Without a tomb, physical anthropology could not begin. Facial reconstruction protocols required a skull, precise measurements of nasal aperture, orbital width, and cranial contour. In its absence, only indirect artifacts could serve as guides. Digital artists therefore turned to sculptures and coins, treating them as bounded proxies rather than literal portraits. Each carried distortions shaped by politics, style, or damage. Analysts isolated repeating proportions across independent objects to narrow plausible facial structures, accepting wide margins of error. The search advanced through omission rather than discovery. Her absence defined the work more than her remains. By the early 20th century, Cleopatra's image had shifted from archaeological fragment to cinematic icon. Silent era productions cast actresses with narrow features and pale complexions, reflecting studio norms rather than ancient evidence. Promotional stills fixed her identity within Art Deco aesthetics, dark eyeliner, sculpted silhouettes, and symmetrical faces fashioned to match commercial beauty standards. Over time, these portrayals entered museum displays and school illustrations, reinforcing a face shaped by film rather than artifacts. The 1963 production expanded this template. Lavish sets and saturated color reshaped Cleopatra into a figure aligned with mid-century glamour. Costumes borrowed loosely from Egyptian motifs, but filtered them through the contemporary fashion of Western studios. Public memory absorbed these images as historical fact, despite numismatic and sculptural evidence indicating different proportions. 
Scholars later noted that cinema's influence exceeded that of archaeology for several generations. By the late 20th century, academic critiques documented how popular media erased the complexity of a Hellenistic ruler governing an African kingdom. Intelligence, political strategy, and multilingual governance slipped behind the weight of cinematic spectacle. The face repeated on posters became a mythic composite detached from the material record. By 2024, advances in 3D imaging allowed researchers to revisit Cleopatra's surviving portraits with greater precision. High-resolution scans of authenticated busts from Berlin, the Vatican, and the British Museum produced detailed meshes of surviving surfaces. Analysts aligned these meshes with proportional data from Ptolemaic royal sculpture, isolating measurements that repeated across independent works. Coins were scanned under raking light, revealing engraving strokes consistent with late Hellenistic dye techniques. Together, these layers formed a constrained dataset rather than a portrait. Forensic artists approached the task through craniofacial mapping. Without a skull, they anchored their estimates to stable features, the pronounced nasal bridge, deep-set orbits, and the distinctive coiffure visible on multiple artifacts. AI-assisted tools averaged these proportions while filtering out clear stylizations introduced by Roman dye engravers. Genetic studies of Hellenistic Macedonian lineages and Egyptian urban communities informed plausible ranges of skin tone and eye color, though each estimate remained probabilistic. The resulting reconstruction showed a face shaped by political imagery and regional ancestry, neither idealized nor speculative. It represented an evidence-driven approximation constrained by artifacts, method, and caution. The image clarified possibilities without claiming certainty. When the reconstruction circulated online in early 2025, response emerged faster than the accompanying explanations. Screenshots detached the image from its methodological notes, allowing viewers to interpret it through contemporary debates rather than archaeological limits. Some reactions framed the portrait as definitive, while others rejected it on the basis of modern identity narratives. Few referenced the numismatic or sculptural evidence that shaped its proportions. Historians addressed the surge with measured clarifications. They cited the documented genealogy of the Ptolemaic dynasty, the Macedonian origins of its founders, and the cosmopolitan structure of Alexandria during Cleopatra's reign. These points highlighted a diverse urban population rather than a singular ethnic identity. Archaeologists reiterated that reconstructions were approximations grounded in available artifacts, not claims about modern categories. The conversation revealed a widening gap between scholarly nuance and digital discourse. Misinterpretations persisted as the image traveled across platforms. Edited versions softened features or altered complexion to match external expectations. Each variation distanced the portrait further from the evidentiary base that produced it. Analysts observed how these variations echoed the same patterns seen in earlier centuries, representation drifting toward ideology. Modern reactions obscured the careful limits of the data. In the final years of the Ptolemaic Kingdom, Cleopatra governed a territory shaped by shifting alliances, Roman pressure, and internal reform. Her image circulated through coins, statues, and official decrees, each crafted to project stability during political strain. These objects formed the core of her visual legacy, surviving long after written accounts fractured into contradiction. Centuries of reproduction altered their meaning, yet the underlying features remained visible beneath corrosion and stylistic drift. Modern reconstruction reassembled these fragments into a cautious approximation. Digital tools highlighted points of agreement across independent artifacts, restoring proportional relationships that once guided palace workshops. The resulting portrait portrayed neither the cinematic monarch nor the idealized queen repeated in textbooks. Instead, it offered a ruler shaped by Hellenistic governance and Alexandrian culture, positioned between Macedonia, Egypt, and Rome. Historians treated this image as a prompt for reconsideration rather than a final answer. Her legacy extends beyond appearance. It lies in treaties negotiated, languages mastered, and political maneuvers documented in Roman histories. The search for her face became a search for accuracy itself, correcting layers of invention accumulated across two millennia. Evidence replaced expectation with measured clarity. Her likeness endures as inference shaped by fragments.